On October 4, 2013, in the village of Bolshoi Atmos, Cherpaksky district in the Omsk region, seven-year-old Kolya Kukin went to school and did not return. His parents sounded the alarm and the search began. On October 5th, volunteers started their search from the village of Bolshoi Atmas. They walked about eight kilometers towards Omsk, spreading out in a long line across the field. The volunteers searched for Kolya until dusk. The boy was not found. At that time, the investigative committee of the region said that a criminal case was opened under the article, Murder of a Minor. This does not mean that the boy was killed. Just with this wording, it is easier to involve all the resources to search for the child. At night, a drone equipped with a thermal imager will search for the missing Kolya. What was strange, the boy's parents, Oksana Kukina and Maxim Kalinin, did not show any special emotions during the search for Kolya, neither love nor pity. Little was known about them in the village. They had moved to Amaz from another village a few years ago and did not communicate with anyone. Who really is this Maxim, who looks quiet and perhaps even harmless person? But it turned out differently. Kalinin abused alcohol and in moments was not restrained. He also had a criminal record. Kalinin got his first conviction when he was 15 for theft. Then there was embezzlement, carjacking, theft and robbery again. He did time, got paroled for good behavior. And then he broke the law again. In 2010, he got two years probation for abuse of a minor, systematically beat his son from his first marriage. And once he put the boy on a chain because he did not study well, Operatives and investigators analyzed every detail, and literally within two days, they came to the conclusion that his parents were involved in the boy's disappearance. Investigators caught on to the fact that the mother came to school 10 minutes after the end of the last lesson and said that their son Kolya did not come home. But by all measures, it's a 15 to 20 minute walk from the school to the boy's house so she didn't meet the time limit. How could she know that the son did not come from school if she came to the school 10 minutes later and reported him missing? The investigators also pointed out that the students went to school together and left school together. And those guys with whom Kolya went said that on that day, he did not leave the house. Kalinin was also found to have minor blood stains on his clothes. Investigators obtained samples and made an examination, and it was confirmed that it was the boy's blood. When Kalinin suspected that the investigators suspected him, he confessed to everything and was detained. There, he confessed to another murder of Polina Nazarova. However, while the suspect was in the pre-trial detention center, he retracted this testimony and said that they were given under pressure. After that, he began to invent various versions of what had happened. In court, the pervert said that on June 29, 2011, he, his wife and children were visiting his fellow villager, Nazarov, where they drank alcohol together. When the Kalinins went home, Polina, the daughter of their acquaintance, came with them. She brought a forgotten children's Panama. The girls stayed to play together with the children. But at this time, Kalinin allegedly argued with his wife, to which Polina made him a rude remark. The man hit the girl on the lips. She shouted that she would tell everything to her parents. In response, she received a slap on the wrist. And then, according to the man's version, the little girl hit a metal pipe under the awning. And then, when he allegedly tried to calm her down, breaking out of the man's hands, she hit the same pipe again and did not get up again. Terrified of the responsibility, the man told his wife to lie to their parents that their daughter did not come and buried the body in a ditch. Although before that, he claimed that he had accidentally hit the girl on the road. Oksana, the wife of the mutilator, told that everything happened differently. On that unfortunate day, Polina actually came to the yard of their house with a forgotten Panama and played together with the children. 
Then, the girl asked to play with the car standing there. Kalinin, who was quite drunk, went out into the yard. But soon, the girl ran into the house in tears and told Oksana that the man had taken off his pants. The man who entered next replied that no such thing had happened and took the little girl into another room, allegedly to calm her down, but he forbade his wife to go in there. Looking into the room a little later, the woman found that the girl, who had already been undressed, was crying on the bed, and Kalinin was sitting next to her in his underwear. Later, the man confessed to his wife, I couldn't help myself and climbed on top of her. The same night, he strangled the girl in the annex, so that she did not tell anyone about what had happened, and buried the body in the gutter. The search for the child yielded nothing. On the day his son died, according to the defendant's version, his wife was tutoring him. Kalinin only gave him a slap on the back for not learning anything. Oksana hit the child so hard that he hit his head on the table. And at night, Kolya became ill, and he died. That's the version Kalinin told in court. In the beginning, he said that Kolya died while repairing the fence as if in his son's head flew off the iron head of a hammer. But then, Oksana told how everything really happened. Checking his son's homework, Kalinin asked him to read the text, but the boy made many mistakes. This angered the grief-stricken father, and he beat the boy to death. The expert examination showed that he hit him on the head at least 30 times. Then the father calmly played the console in the room with the dying boy, and when he died, he took him to the dump in cold blood and buried him. The defendant was also accused of raping his son. However, this accusation, according to the court, was not sufficiently confirmed, although forensic medical examination showed that the boy had characteristic injuries. I was honest and sincere, as in confession. These were the words with which Kalinin began his last word. Afterwards, he repeated once again, that he had not killed the children, much less abused them. The only thing the defendant agreed with was illegal possession of firearms, but he immediately noted that he had voluntarily handed over the shotgun to the representatives of law enforcement agencies. But in the end, the court sentenced him to life imprisonment in a special regime colony. Let him get what he deserves. Polina Nazarova's mother barely audibly said through tears as she left the courtroom. And in general, he shouldn't be sitting somewhere. If they had given him to us in Bolshoi Atmos, we would have torn him apart. But Oksana's not here for some reason. She knew and she could have saved my daughter. But she was afraid. She should be punished, too. If you had lived with them for even five minutes, you would know what kind of a beast he is, Lyudmila Nikolaevna. Oksana's mother interceded for her daughter. I even took my daughter away from him. She was afraid of him, so she couldn't leave. But it would have been better to put him in jail for his first son when he put them on a chain and beat them with reins. And if I had the right, I would have shot him myself long ago. Support the video with a like and the channel with a subscription. And all the best to you. Be careful.